Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating the perfect gel button here in Photoshop. We're going to take a look at creating this sort of glass backdrop as well as the text that cuts into the gel button. So it's going to be kind of like a, a big three-in-one tutorial all wrapped into one. So I have here uh, my start file uh, that I'm using. It's basically just going to be this background. So, But this is the finished product here. I'm actually going to close this so I can't cheat. And I'm going to hop over to the bridge, and I'm just going to double click on my, my little start file here. There's just some color that I've, you know, kind of blurred together and, I don't know, duplicated and, you know, set the blend mode to overlay or something. Uh, I honestly don't remember how I created this little interesting background. But that's beyond uh, the point. What we're going to do right off the bat is create a new layer. You can name this layer Glass. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to draw a swath or a, you know, just a big rectangle across, you know, some, you know, somewhere right around there, and I'm going to fill it with white. Alt, backspace, option, delete, if your foreground color is white. If not, uh, just press the D key. It's going to reset your foreground and background color, and then hit the X key. It's going to swap your foreground and background color. Alt, backspace, option, delete if you're on the Mac, and voila, we're filled. Command or Control D to deselect. Now that we've done that, what I want to do is go ahead and go Layer, uh, Layer Style, Blending Options. We want to add kind of a dark gray stroke to this, but we don't want the stroke to lose opacity, whereas the rest of the white we want to lose opacity. We want it to be see-through, like glass. So I want to change the fill opacity. The fill opacity is not going to affect layer styles. I'm going to reset, or I'm going to set, I should say, the fill opacity to something like 20%. Just a nice, really easy to see through glass. We're going to go ahead and add a stroke. Make sure the positioning of our stroke is to the outside. Set the size to 1%. And then just choose kind of like a nice dark to medium gray. Just going to sort of set off the edge just a little bit. But you don't want it to be too, too obvious. You can also go in and add an inner glow, just a very subtle yet very large sized inner glow. You probably want to use something like white. Uh, but you really want to drop the opacity back to something around you know 10 or 15. Just to give the edges a little bit of highlights, kind of like you would normally see. Uh, with glass, then you can hit OK. Now that we've done that, we want to control click on the thumbnail to this layer. It's going to load that layer as a selection. Great. Now that we've done that, select the background layer, and we just want to duplicate this chunk underneath the glass up. Okay? This chunk of color. We want to duplicate it up to a new layer. So just hit Command or Control J. You can see right there, we've just duplicated that up. Great. We now need to blur this, but the problem that we're going to have is if we go ahead and blur right now, it's going to blur and spread everything out. We want to only blur this and not affect any of these transparent pixels. So we want to control click the layer to load that as a selection. It's going to constrain our blur. Oops, we'll shut the glass layer off. It's going to constrain our blur only to within uh, our selection. So we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and do something, you know, between 5 and 10. 6 isn't bad. Maybe I'll bump it up to something like 8. That looks pretty good. Hit OK and Command or Control D to deselect. Turn the glass layer back on, and now underneath the glass it is nice and blurred. Blurred even more than it is out here. Uh, out here. Go ahead and create another new layer by selecting the New Layer button, and we're going to name this Button Base. Now that we've done that, we're going to grab the Rounded Rectangle tool, and there's a couple things you want to do. Up here in the Control Bar, number one, you want to choose the icon to the right. Up here, there are these three icons. The one's for a vector shape layer. The other one's to draw paths. The last one is just to draw straight fill pixels. Nothing vector about it, no paths. Just draw me a shape. That's what we want to do. You can see, yeah, there's the tooltip, fill pixels. And then set the radius to something around 30. With my document, and my document size is 1280 by 720. Uh, this button's going to look really nice right on here with a radius, or a corner radius is what it is, of 30 pixels. Then I'm just going to draw out a nice button shape. Again, I'm up on my new layer, say button base, right up there on the new layer. Now that we've done that, control click the glass layer thumbnail. It's going to load that as a selection again. We're still on the button base layer. Go ahead and choose your move tool. The hotkey for that is just the letter V. Okay. Now up here in the control bar we have some alignment options. We're going to align this guy vertically and horizontally. There we go. Centered it up right there within our glass shape. Command or Control D, D to deselect. Now it's just a matter of adding some layer styles to this button to make it look like a gel button. So again, we're going to go layer, layer style, and let's throw a subtle drop shadow underneath it to kick things off. Now, actually, I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can really see what I'm doing here. There we go. And I'm going to go layer, layer style, drop shadow. I want to uncheck Use Global Light, set it to around 120, that's fine. Distance of 2, and uh, a size of, let's try 7. Yeah, seven's probably pretty good. 
And then we really want to knock the opacity down to something like 20. Very subtle. We're going to go ahead and apply our gradient overlay next. So we're going to choose gradient overlay and we're going to create a custom gradient. So just select that gradient bar. Gradient editor will pop up. And what we want to do is just select one of the, you know, any of these gradients. Uh, if you need help uh, placing gradient uh, anchor points or tan uh, not tangent handles, just the little color stops. Uh, you can choose one that already has color stops placed. I'm going to go with the simple black to white and I'm just going to click twice. So we have four stops. And I'm going to choose this guy right here. And I'm going to make this, I'm going, I'm going to go with a blue. So I'm going to go with kind of a dark desaturated blue. Great. And I'm going to choose this guy on the end. Again, I'm going to go with kind of a lighter desaturated blue. And eh, maybe not quite that light. There we go, something like that. And I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to choose, I'm going to attempt to get about the same color for the very top of the button. Great. And then here for this guy, we're just going to choose kind of a middle desaturated blue. Something kind of like uh, that. I'm going to hit OK. And there is our nice bluish, purplish button. I'm going to hit OK. And just a quick tip, if you want to be able to quickly change the color of the button, you can go ahead and apply a color overlay. And then just set the blend mode to either hue or color, depending on what works best. There's hue. Uh, here's color. Uh, and then you can just choose, you know, a new color if you want to go with some kind of like a pink. Um, but, you know, the, the, uh, the results can be kind of spotty. So working with the raw gradient is probably going to be your best bet. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, after we've done that, we're going to go ahead and place an inner glow. So I'm going to go inner glow, and I just want to make this white because regardless of the color, we want this inner glow just to brighten the edges. We're going to hit OK. And I'm going to make the size pretty extreme, maybe something like 35 or 40. Uh, 35 actually looks pretty good. I'm going to try 40. No, 40, you start to see the corners a little bit too much. I'm going to go 35. And I'm going to uh, maybe reduce the opacity just a little bit, something between 65 and 70, and then set the blend mode to overlay. That's going to kind of let the color underneath uh, affect the color of our uh, inner glow. Therefore, if we change the color of our gradient to like a red, it's not going to look crazy with this like blue inner glow. So we don't need to worry about that. And right here looking at my button, I'm not quite happy with my gradient, so I'm going to go in and kind of tweak it a little bit more. I'm actually going to drop this a little bit, make this more blue, and brighten this guy up a little up here, maybe saturate him a little bit more. That's a bit too much. And go ahead and tuck this guy into here a little more. Again, make him a little more blue. Not quite aqua, just blue. All right, great. And shift this guy up a little bit. Drop down, so we're definitely getting a nice light blue. Hit OK. And then you can even throw another stop down in here on the bottom. I'm almost going to make this white, uh, just to kind of give it a glow coming up from the bottom a little bit. There we go. Hit OK. I kind of like that a little more. Uh, the, the way your button finally looks is really going to depend a lot on how much time you spend kind of tweaking your gradient and, you know, make, moving things around. But a, a good idea with gel buttons is to have at least one dark bar, or really just one dark bar, kind of in the middle, so you kind of have this shadow in the middle of your button. So we're going to hit OK there, and I think we're done here with the layer styles. We might come back in later and maybe tweak it, add a little stroke. You know what, actually, come to think of it, let's add a little stroke. Uh, just a one pixel stroke, kind of a dark-ish blue. Maybe a mid middle blue, something like that. Hit OK, great. And then hit OK to commit the change. All right, so remember, if we shut off the effects, we just have a plain white square. Add the effects, we've got a nice gel button. Now, it doesn't end right there. We're going to create a new layer and name this layer Shine. And we're going to grab our elliptical marquee tool. Now, another thing that's kind of popular, and actually maybe we'll go ahead and do this, uh, is when you actually take the rounded rectangle and make that the shine, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. We can dump our shine layer. Obviously, I didn't plan on this before I started recording, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Take your button base layer and duplicate it, Command or Control J. Then right click on it, and we're going to move down to clear layer style. It's probably just off screen, I don't know. Right click and go down to clear layer style. So now we just have this white shape. Drag this guy back into here. Now that we have that white shape, we're going to go Edit, Free Transform. And we're going to pull it up a bit. And we're going to pull it in a bit. I'm holding on my Alt key, by the way, to constrain proportions. There we go. So we kinda, we're going to have this, this, this sort of shine here. There we go. 
Move them right over, maybe drag it out just a little bit more. And center it up, sort of. There we go, commit those changes, and then just set this layer to something like soft light, and then reduce the opacity. So that's kind of a way some people make shines. You know what, I'm not liking the way that looks. I'm gonna drag that to the garbage, and we're gonna go with my original uh, method. Just rename it shine. We're gonna go through this real quick to make up for lost time. Grab the elliptical marquee tool, and uh, pull down and across our button. That's about good. Fill it with white, alt, backspace, option, delete, command or control, D to deselect. And we want to mask this to the shape below. So what we're going to do is we could, you know, use the shape below as a clipping mask. I don't really want to do that, though. So I'm just going to control click on the, the button base thumbnail. It's going to load that as a selection. Remember, we have the shine layer selected. Now we can just go layer, uh, layer mask, uh, reveal selection. There we go. Make sure you select the layer again. And we're just going to go ahead and set it to soft light. There we go. Cool. We can reduce the opacity as well. Uh, to, to lessen the strength of the shine. And now that we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and add some text. Now, the biggest thing with adding text is really finding a font face that works. You can really make this effect look bad if you use a bad typeface. So we're going to spend a quick second and just pick out a font that we like. I'm going to go ahead and grab the text tool. Now here, the foreground color doesn't matter. It can be white, it can be black, it can be green. It really doesn't matter. Um, and actually, I'm right on a font face that I really like. This Steinem font face I think looks pretty good. But, you know, if you go through and try to use something that's too ornate and has too much going on, you can really start to lose the effect. However, there are some pretty bold script fonts that can look pretty good with this effect. However, I'm using this font called Steinem. To be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's free or not. It probably is free because I don't buy that many fonts. So Steinem. Uh, we're going to go ahead and type the word TUTVID. When my text, oh, there it is. TUTVID. And I'm not typing in all caps. I'm just, you know, just typing it out. And I'm going to highlight the text and uh, go ahead and size it up. We're probably actually going to size it up even a little more than that. Let's go 120 point. That's pretty good. Hit the check key to commit the changes. And uh, hit the V key to grab my move tool. And I'm just going to drag this type here to, you know, right around the center of uh, my button. Uh, we could control click the button and align it perfectly. We're not going to take the time to do that. On the type layer, we're going to go layer, layer style. And uh, we're going to start with a color overlay. And we're going to fill it with a dark gray. This is why the color of the type didn't matter. So just a nice dark gray, pretty dark. Yeah, it's a little too dark. Right about there. That's four five four five four five. Um, but actually, darker is better than lighter. So pretty dark. And now here's the important part: the stroke. You want to go ahead and add a one pixel stroke, but you want to change the fill type of the stroke from color to gradient. And the default gradient is exactly what we want, just a straight black to white. However, we want the white part to be on the bottom. So we're going to reverse this. And you can see we now have the white on the bottom. And the effect is just a little bit too intense as it is. So we're going to reduce the opacity to something like 70. Uh, that's a bit better. That actually helps the black disappear into the gray a little more and just leave us with this nice, uh, lighter sort of highlight at the base of the text. And uh, the last thing we want to do is go ahead and apply an inner shadow to this text. And again, we're going to kill the global light. We're going to go to about one, either 110 or 120 degrees, distance of about 2, and a size of about 3. And then just reduce that opacity of the inner glow, or excuse me, inner shadow, just a bit. Something like, you know, 40, 45 maybe. There we go. Hit OK. And there is our text cut into our button. The cool thing about this text is it is still live text. I'm going to go window character and drag my character panel onto screen. And I could resize this text. Let's just bring it down to 100. You can see it resizes. We keep the effect. We could change the font if we wanted. See? Voila. Not, don't particularly want that font. Uh, but there we go. Just like that, we have created a very cool uh, gel text or gel button and this text that is really cut into it. So I'm going to zoom out. You can see the whole thing like so. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Thanks for sticking around and watching the whole thing. If you enjoyed it or even if you didn't enjoy it, go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.